want to see increased taxes and start investing in education and health. And health expenditures, of course, give you dividends in terms of the most vulnerable people. <coughs> I can show you several other figures showing the same pattern. Democracy. Just with that election affinity to being in the corridor, create a very different type of economy. More based on bottom-up participation, more emphasis on technological progress, faster growth, and more broader gains from that growth. So, how do we make the corridor work? What are the forces? that put us in there, and that make this upward heading trajectory tick. Well, I'm going to start, oh, sorry, I'm going to, oh, oh I'm going to say I'm getting confused because there are two screens here, and I'm getting, okay, so I'll just head here, okay, and that, that's why I can see here. So I'm going to start telling that story with this chart of broken photos. Those of you who can read Greek would recognize the name of Themistocles. Themistocles was the closest thing to Pericles, but Themistocles is much more, in my opinion. The closest thing that actually happens, the birthplace of democracy, according to some, had as hero. He was an inspiring leader. He saw the threat from Persian. He single-handedly uh, convinced the Athenians to organize the navy. Then he led that navy, saving Athens. Then he recognized the threat from Sparta. He campaigned for turning Athens' attention against Sparta. But he was ostracized and sent away to exile from Athens for 10 years. That was a unique Athenian institution. The law of ostracism that Chrysenus introduced in uh, five uh, uh, in 6th century BC. According to the law of ostracism, every way in the assembly where Athenians met, all had a vote except the slaves. There were slaves, so we'll come to that. And that assembly democratically decided whether there would be an ostracism. If the vote was for an ostracism, then every Athenian citizen would write the name of a person on a broken piece of pottery called an ostracon, as the word ostracism. And whosever name was written most frequently was ostracized for 10 years from Athens. Think about it. What is that institution doing? Was it a, the outcome of a drunken night? No, it actually served a purpose, and you can see traces of it in previous social norms. Athenian and Athenian democracy critically depended on its ability to control the elite. Those were the struggles that led to the formation of the institution, and the, those struggles defined the working of Athenian democracy. <coughs> and the real threat wasn't just economic, wasn't just political, it was social. People getting too big for their own. Dominating others, telling others what to do, and setting up a deep social hierarchy. And the tool of ostracism was very much an attempt to deal with that problem. If you get too big for your books, even if you're a you're going to get ostracized. That distrust of power was what animated Athenian democracy. It isn't unique to Athenian democracy. It is actually visible in every domain of every human interaction. It is made weaker. It is made prostate, meek, in societies where you have an despotic leader who tells you all wisdom comes from him or her, most of the time. But it is even present in the most despotic society. And you see it very clearly among the small-scale societies. The Tim who have been studied by the husband and wife team of Mohammed for over 20 years is a perfect illustration. All of the social norms of Tim, from the social, the political, the economic, are organized around cutting down the would-be, boss strongman. Too much 
Display of power, you're cut down. Too much wealth, you're cut down. Try to use the market in order to accumulate more power, no, that's not allowed. There is an incredible suspicion of political inequality, which then spills into economic inequality in many of these societies. But the Tim dealt with that by preventing all kinds of state building. So why are the Athenians, why, how did they actually manage it differently? Well, the key is that the Tim did not have the institutional setup for scaling up those that distrust of power into anything that we could control a modern state. So the genius of Athenians, through a process of going over 200 years, was to develop institutions that could do the role, that crazy looking norms in the, among the tip, like witchcraft, or normal laws which cannot be traded type of attitude. No, we can allow you to take out uh, economic activity, but then we have the tools to regulate. It's not a bad thing, but it was just in modern society. Who do you think would be ostracized? <laughs> so, now, Athens is of course special. Some draw the links, some see the origin of modern democracy in Athens. Some ways that is true. Some others argue European democracies and European laws that are perhaps more protective of liberty than in many other places, they go back to the Romans, they go back to European culture, they go back to European geography, they go back to European values. Well, there's some truth to many of these claims. But, in fact, we emphasize something quite different. And something really about the court. What really set Europe apart wasn't just the Greek heritage, it wasn't just the Roman heritage. It wasn't European values or European geography. It was a fortuitous balance that emerged during a particular historical juncture. Specifically, after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, two things coincided in Europe. A history, a blueprint, a memory, an understanding of how centralized administrative institutions of the form of the later Roman Empire worked, all of those institutional prerequisites, but a power vacuum that then created a political equilibrium that was very different from the Roman one. In particular, with the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Europe was run over by a Germanic tribe, in particular France, that had a very different set of political traditions. And most distinguishing around their political traditions is that for their time, for the you know, fifth, sixth century, they had quite remarkably participatory political institutions. This is what some historians call the assembly politics of the Germanic tribe. Many decisions were made in assemblies, and even powerful warrior kings had temporary authority from the assemblies who had to validate their decisions were to give them decisions. This is Hikmaro's reigns. Unfortunately, we don't have many uh, in person now. This is Hikmaro's reigns, come way after the early Franks. The Franks are the amalgamation of other Germanic tribes coming to focus with the Merovingians. And then after the Merovingians fall after 200 years, you have the Carolingians. So, <coughs> built by Charlemagne. So Hikmaro's reigns was a uh, a teacher for Carloman III, a great grandson of, uh, of, of, of Charlemagne. And he was teaching him how he should reign over his realm. And he said, you know, forget the idea that you rule this country. You need the approval of the assembly. And he describes what these assemblies are. One for the elites, one for the regular people. Information has to be spread. They need to approve your decisions. And this is Actually, you know, 800 years, uh, yeah, 800 years, 700 years after what Tacitus described about earlier, or you can see that a little bit after Tacitus, about early Germanic trust. It's remarkably the same. It's exactly the same two assemblies, exactly the same division. The, the, the chiefs become powerful during times of war, 
but not otherwise, it is an information assembly, bottom-up decision, bottom-up communication. So these two somewhat unique, not all unique, you have similar things among Mongols, but perhaps some a little bit different. Of course, you have other bureaucratic institutions in China uh, around the same time, just like the Roman one. But this confluence of these two semi-unique features was what set Europe into the beginning of the corridor. So you have the power and capacity of centralized institution, Roman law, for instance, and the ability of society to participate in politics. And it is that process that we argue put many European places inside a corridor in which they fluctuated widely back and forth, sometimes out, but have by very broad outline have also followed these trajectories of upward. But this corridor, any European story, by the way, 